Hello, and welcome to Squall Strategies Captain's Log, your best source for maritime law updates on the internet. I'm Lauren Began, Principal of Squall Strategies, a boutique law firm specializing in federal regulatory review, general cargo and shipping matters, shipping act inquiries, foreign trade and tariffs, and any other maritime related matters that you might need help with. For more information, visit www.squallstrategies.com or email me at Lauren Began or lbegan at squallstrategies.com. Today we're talking about the Federal Maritime Commission. The FMC is the independent regulatory agency responsible for regulating the U.S. International Ocean Transportation System for the benefit of U.S. exporters, importers, and the U.S. consumer. Their mission is to ensure a competitive and reliable international ocean transportation supply system that supports the U.S. economy and protects the public from unfair and deceptive practices. So the FMC is made up of five commissioners with one being designated by the president as the chairman. The commissioners are presidentially nominated and Senate confirmed. They're representative of the political parties so that there's three of one party and two of the other, but in general, they're insulated from the coming and goings of general DC politics. Currently, there are three Republicans and two Democrats, but as the change of the administration, there will be a change of that balance. The chairman was changed from a Republican chairman to now Chairman Maffei, a, a Democrat, and it's likely that there will be three Democrats and two Republicans in, in short order. The FMC was created in 1961. Previously, it was part of the Federal Maritime Board. However, in 1961, that was split. So previously, it was the Federal Maritime Commission and MARAD together under one agency, the Federal Maritime Board. So when they split, FMC was charged with regulating U.S. ocean commerce, and MARAD was was formed to create to promote America's merchant marine and oversee an emergency reserve of cargo ships for use of times in conflict. So how does the FMC actually protect the U.S. importer, exporter, and consumer? So they review and monitor agreements among ocean common carriers and MTOs um, serving the U.S. foreign ocean-borne trade to ensure that they do not cause substantial increases in transportation costs or decreases in transportation services. They also maintain and review confidentially filed service contracts to guard against detrimental effects to shipping. They provide a forum for exporters, importers, and other members of the shipping public to obtain relief from shipping practices or disputes that impede the flow of commerce. They ensure common carrier tariff rates and charges are published in automated tariff systems and electronically available to the public. They monitor rates, charges, and rules of government-owned or controlled carriers to ensure they're just and reasonable. And they'll take action to address unfavorable conditions caused by foreign governments or business practices in U.S. foreign shipping trades. The FMC protects the public from financial harm and contributes to the integrity and security of the U.S. supply chain and transportation system by helping resolve some of these disputes that come up in the shipment of cargo, personal or household goods, or disputes between cruise vessel operators and passengers. They investigate and rule on complaints regarding rates, charges, classifications, and practices of common carriers, MTOs, and ocean transportation intermediaries that might violate the Shipping Act of 1984. They license those OTIs with appropriate character and adequate financial responsibility requirements. They identify and hold regulated entities accountable for mislabeling cargo ship from the United States. And they ensure that cruise lines maintain financial responsibility to pay claim for personal injury or death and to reimburse passengers for failure to perform the cruise. These items are all listed on the Federal Maritime Commission's website, and you can reference back to that if you have any questions about these specific things that I've just mentioned. The statutes administered by the Commission are the Shipping Act of 1984, which was amended in 1998 under the Ocean Shipping Reform Act, the Foreign Shipping Practices Act of 1988, and Section 19 of the Merchant Marine Act of 1920. So the Federal Maritime Commission does touch crews a little bit, and let me go back to that. It's a smaller section that the, that the commission is part of, but this is where they do get involved with the crews. I mentioned that they ensure cruise lines maintain financial responsibility to pay claims for personal injury or death and to reimburse passengers for failure to perform a cruise. If you have problems with your cruise, if they canceled your sailing, if you have any other issues, there is a Consumer Affairs Division of the Federal Maritime Commission. It's called CATERS. It's the Consumer Affairs and Dispute Resolution Services. Please reach out to them. They'd be happy to have a set up a mediation 
Um, they'd be happy to help you. Maybe you had some movement of, of home goods that didn't go well. Um, it, it was really set up so that the individual person, the consumer, can reach out to them in a less formal way and start to get some answers. Should you need a little more formality, you can certainly enter into a mediation, which is something that the caters does offer. Or if you need it to be even more formal than that, feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to discuss your options. Um, and I think that, you know, we, we could talk through with the different areas of potential questions that you have in the Shipping Act world. The Federal Maritime Commission, like I said, is one of the lesser understood agencies within the federal government. But I hope that this little snippet provides a little clarity to what the Federal Maritime Commission does and is. They have many offices, and actually they have many economists. They, of course, have lawyers. But being that they are a more economically facing regulatory, independent regulatory agency, they're able to monitor the markets. They're able to main, make sure that there's no bad actors within the shipping community. And if there are, that they're properly handled, they're probably they're properly reviewed, and when, when the complaints come in, that they're properly adjudicated. If you have any other questions about the Federal Maritime Commission, please reach out, like I said, www.squallstrategies.com or email me at lbegan at squallstrategies.com. Again, this is Squall Strategies Captain's Log, your best source for maritime law updates on the Internet. We'll see you next time.